Okay, hello, I'm Marko Mäkälä, the lead developer in ODB at MariaDB since uh, I think seven years or something like that. Uh, I started uh, with InnoDB uh, 20 years ago, first at, at the InnoBase company and then, then at uh, Oracle. And uh, today I'm talking about the undo logs and uh, the purge of uh, transaction history. So the outline of my talk is uh, why do we have these undo logs and what is the purge of history and what is the purge lag? Why should you care about this and uh, how can you avoid or mitigate this purge lag? And how to reclaim the space that is or was used by undo logs? How the transaction metadata is stored in InnoDB? And then a section about uh, some recently fixed bugs and ongoing uh, work on performance. So what, what are the undo logs and what is the purge? And why do we have the undo logs? Well, uh, InnoDB is designed so that the transactions can be arbitrarily large. In some other storage engines like uh, MyDocs or ARIA, uh, there is no separate undo log. There is only a write ahead log that is written when the transaction is committed. And until, until the transaction is committed, everything must be buffered in memory. InnoDB doesn't have that. InnoDB writes, a, for durability, it writes this uh, circular redo log. And that has a limited size. But uh, InnoDB is writing the changes as it is uh, making them. So during the execution of transaction, InnoDB is already writing the changes to the data pages and to undo log pages. And uh, transaction commit basically is a simple operation that only marks the transaction log header as committed. And this is one reason why we have undo logs. Basically, no matter how small our RAM size is or how small our read log size is, we can have arbitrary large uh, transactions. Another reason is that uh, there is no limit how old uh, transactions you may have. You may start a transaction and with multi-versioning, that transaction will see the state of the database as it was at that point of time. No matter how many transactions are committed afterwards, this transaction will see the state as it was when it started or when the very three view was created. I had a previous talk a year ago about this, uh, how this MVCC works in detail. So I will not go into that. And uh, yeah, obviously, if you need to roll back a transaction, then all the changes will need to be undone. And that is, of course, done by, by this unlock records. And this may be part of a crash recovery. If the server is killed before the transaction is committed, then the transaction will be recovered as uh, incomplete. And, and then uh, it, uh, its changes will be rolled back. And uh, similarly, if, if you have a two-phase commit, XA start, XA prepare, and server was killed before XA rollback or XA commit, then these transactions will remain in, in the XA prepare state until an explicit command to rollback or commit comes. Now, what is this purge? It's basically garbage collection of the undo logs of committed transactions. So yes, the transactions can be arbitrarily large, which means that uh, we have no limit on the size of the envelopes for a particular transaction. And uh, it also means that when the transaction is committed, it must not discard the envelopes immediately, because we may have those old reviews that need to be able to construct the state of the database when those reviews were created. So we must defer the cleanup of commit to this purge process. And uh, these uh, MVCC reads, they, they must unsee these uh, changes done by the commit. And uh, it may be that uh, you have started a review like an hour ago, and purge would be blocked for all transactions that we were committed in the last one hour. It would be a huge amount of, of undo lock that needs to be purged when that all this review finally closes. Uh, the review, we have this uh, purge sys.u, which is uh, 
the clone of the oldest video, it says uh, it, it gives a permission to remove history. But uh, that removal doesn't happen immediately. So we have these purge threads that are doing it, but it may take some time. And it may even fail to keep up with the very bright intensive workload. And that, that is the purge stack problem. So how to avoid the purge lag? I think the biggest problem with, with the purge currently is uh, secondary indexes. In, in the cluster index or in the primary key index, we only have the latest version of the record with, with the primary key. And then we have the Andulog pointer pointing the Andulog to get the previous version. But uh, in secondary index records, we don't have that uh, transaction ID in each record. And we actually have multiple secondary index records. If you modify an, an index column, uh, then uh, there will be a copy of each value of that index column in the secondary index. So you will, will have a, you may have lots of records, extra records in the secondary index. And when you are accessing the secondary index, you, uh, the code must look up the primary key and check if, if this secondary in the record actually exists in our view. And person needs to do the same. So this can be very expensive. And uh, this can lead to a kind of a death, a death spiral. If you get a lot of purge lag, you will get more of these uh, extra records in the secondary indexes. Everything will be sm uh, slower, including purge. And that's why we definitely must do something about this purge lag in, in the code. There are some mitigations that you can do as a user of the database. If instead of using the default uh, isolation level uh, repeatable read, if you use read committed, then it will create a new read view for each statement instead of using one read view for the whole, whole uh, transaction. And if you use uh, read uncommitted, then it will not create a read view at all, which means that uh, the purge will not be blocked by by a review, because uh, you don't create, create one. So perhaps we will allow, be allowed to proceed, if, even though you are trying to read something. You don't really care if it's, uh, if it's uh, consistent, you just need some, some data. And uh, another thing that, as a user, you can do, you can enable the bulk insert interface that was uh, introduced in MariaDB 10.6 for InnoDB. So if you, if you set unique checks uh, zero and set foreign key checks zero, then it will, uh, and if you are inserting into an empty table or partition, then the table will be exclusively locked. And uh, you know, we will only write one undo lock record saying that uh, if this transaction is killed or, or rolled back, then we truncate the table or partition. And this is, uh, of course, much nicer because for purge there is nothing to do. We only see this record, okay, if, if this will be rolled back, then truncate, well, purge is never executed on something that was rolled back, so purge will just ignore that record. And uh, we will have le fewer unlock records to deal with. This is uh, good when you are loading data into the database. And then there are some uh, tweaks. Uh, to parameters, we could try them, but uh, I don't know if, if this is, could be that, uh, that the cure is uh, worse than the disease if you enable this uh, throttling of, of, uh, of uh, DML operations. The idea of, of these parameters is, is to slow down inserts, updates, and deletes if, if the purge is lagging behind. This was recently this logic was recently improved uh, in MariaDB 10.6 uh, so that it doesn't unnecessarily slow down those operations. It used to be so that even though there is an old read view that prevents birth from running, it would still delay. But not now in MariaDB latest uh, 10.6 uh, and later versions, we do not do that, do that uh, unnecessary delay. But still, this is just a workaround and a hack. It, it does help a bit uh, to reduce the purge like the history list length growth, but uh, it's it's not a really acceptable or good solution. We need something on, on, on the code side. And then uh, one section of my talk is uh, how to reclaim the space that was used by Angular pages. You probably know 
are used to know that the uh, InnoDB system table says never shrinks. And by default, the undo log records are written to the InnoDB system table space. So if you had the burst in your workload that caused the lots of undo log records to be written, and you had a lot of burst like in the history, and if those records were written to the system table space, then you used to be out of luck. But now, thanks to my Indian colleague, uh, Thiru Narayanan, something I don't remember in this last name we call him Thiru. He has done most of this uh, work here. Uh, he allows uh, uh, his changes uh, in MariaDB Server 10.11 or Enterprise Server 10.6 allow you to change uh, the number of InnoDB under table spaces on an existing database. So that if, if you do a slow shutdown of the server and then you can change this InnoDB undo table spaces to move the undo logs from the system table space to these dedicated table spaces. That, that will prevent further growth of, of the system table space because of undo logs. But it's uh, still not the whole solution. One more thing in MariaDB Server 11.2 was that uh, you can specify an auto shrink attribute to the system table space so that any Three pages at the end of the system table space. Uh, the system table space can be shrunk so that on, only the last allocated page in the system table space will remain. So this this will allow the database to shrink. It's not not the perfect thing because we don't know what is in the last page and we don't move pages around to make it shrink more. But uh, it's definitely a step into the right direction. And this is done only on server startup too to limit any, any uh, problems when, when the server is running. Then we have this uh, old mechanism, uh, InnoDB unlock truncate. I think it was added in uh, MySQL 5.7 at MariaDB 10.2. It works so that if you are using this dedicated unlock table spaces, then uh, it will choose one of the unlock table spaces for truncation one that has exceeded the specified maximum size. And, uh, and then uh, it will block any rights to this under table space. Transactions will use other under table spaces except this one that we have chosen for truncation. And once uh, it has sort of cooled down, everything in this table space can be purged. Then we will truncate and rewrite this table space and move to the next one. And, and allow rights to this one. In my, my SQL, there is a separate log file for, for this unknown table space truncation. In MariaDB, we are using uh, the InnoDB write ahead log. Uh, this allows concurrent backups to work without problems and, and simplifies cache recovery. Now, how the logs are stored? There is a in the system table space, page number five is the transaction system page. It's on the left side of, of the slide. It has a pointer, uh, it, it has uh, 128 pointers to this rollback segment error pages. The first one is hard coded to be in the system table space, and the rest can be moved to this dedicated undo table spaces. And when you are this is basically for compatibility reasons. We, we are uh, reserving the rollback segment zero. I, I didn't dare to change the file format there, just just to play it safe. So basically, if you are using multiple undo table spaces, you are using this 127 rollback segments for your for your undo logs. And in in each uh, rollback segment header, you have an array of uh, pointers to the start of undo log for each transaction. You, have, you can have a limited number of uh, active, concurrently active transactions. I think it's uh, some hundreds of thousands, and it depends on the inner DB page size. But once the transaction is committed, it will be moved from this, uh, the envelope segment header will, will be marked as committed, and then it will be moved uh, to the start of the history list, which is on, here on the right side of, of, uh, of the slide. So a committed transaction will just move to the purge list, the history list, and, and that's what, what the commit does. It's a very, very simple operation. 
So now I'm going to mention some decently fixed bugs and uh, some performance work. Uh, we were considering to enable this uh, undo lock truncation by default because uh, we made the multiple undo uh, table spaces default in, in was it uh, 10.11 or 11.0? And at the same, same time, we were considering could we automatically truncate or by default truncate the undo locks. Uh, we decided against that because uh, it would cause some performance uh, reduction and uh, it could be better for users to have control of it when they think that uh, they can aff afford the some extra load from the server. But, uh, we found some bugs when we were testing that. A couple of bugs were that uh, the purge was actually running too early. As a result of this, uh, a concurrent read could uh, get a crash when it's accessing an Andulok record, because the Andulok page would already have been freed and reallocated for something else, and the Andulok record would have been overwritten by something else. And then uh, there were some regression due to fixes of these bugs. It's a rather complex code, and uh, it, it was quite tricky to understand all, all implications. So there was rather embarrassing bug that we didn't catch internally, that uh, in order to be able to uh, kind of leak pages in, in the undo table space or in the system table space. It, it would never free the undo lock pages that were actually already processed. That, that was fixed in an in unscheduled re release. And then, then we got a rather improbable hang, a deadlock. I added some checks against the uh, redo lock overwrite uh, when, when, doing, when doing this uh, undo lock truncation, but uh, I, I had forgotten that uh, when you are calling this redo lock check function, you are not allowed to hold any latches that may block page writes. And that's why, why this check had to move, be moved uh, to a little bit upper level. It's, it's a bit inaccurate. If you are using a very small InnoDB redo lock, you can theoretically, if you have bursted workload, you can, you can have an unrecoverable server because of that. But no, normally the recommendation is, is to have a redo lock uh, about the size of uh, one hour worth of uh, writes. So you shouldn't normally run into that. And then there was a bug that, uh, an older bug, uh, that uh, if you enable the InnoDB undulog truncation and the undulogs are already logically empty, there is nothing to purge, then it would fail to truncate the undo table spaces. They were basically all full of garbage, but it would not truncate them. Then there was this one, also an older bug. It was quite interesting. I used the RR debugger for, for this. We use that for internal testing. So about one third of the, of the InnoDB test runs are, are with the, the RR tool. It's uh, basically recording the whole execution uh, of the server that was killed and, and the next server that was started and, and so on. So we get the whole trace from the start of, of the set, uh, test to the problem and we can debug uh, everything in, in that trace. So we found, found a funny case where, where uh, there was a crash or there was a restore of a backup and after that we got a crash when the server was starting up. And the reason was that uh, we had a recovered transaction that needed to be rolled back and then uh, it was, well it was an empty transaction that was being committed because you know DB works in that way and uh, then it was uh, was uh, changing something and, and, and the purge subsystem was expecting the transaction counter to, to not change because there hadn't been any any real transactions and the fix of this was uh, to simplify the rollback so that rollback will not uh, defer things it will immediately run what, whatever purge would do so th this would uh, result in smaller purge lag and simpler rollback of, uh, of transactions and, and simpler logic for transaction commit uh, we have a Speaking of deferring things, uh, Angular pages are not freed immediately. There is this uh, cached Angular state. 
purpose of that is to allow the next uh, transaction to use to reuse the same page. If you have a lot of small transactions, they can reuse the same Angular page. And uh, then when the perf removes the last uh, processes, the last uh, of these transactions, th then it can uh, finally free that page. Th this will give quite a bit of performance benefit because we, we don't have to wait for the uh, table space slash for the page allocation and so on. Oh. Uh, then there are some changes that uh, improve the performance with uh, uh, temporary tables. Let's see, I got some extra, okay. Well, you can read, read the slide, I guess I'm running out of time soon. But um, maybe the last one is uh, worth mentioning in the upcoming 11.3 uh, release, we have a new configuration parameter or, or actually a setable variable. You can request uh, the temporary table space to be truncated in NLDB while the server is running. Then uh, something that I have been working on recently, still working on it, is uh, reducing this purge lag. There were several problems found uh, by running a benchmark. But one of them was uh, pretty kind of a surprise which I got after running the off CPU time tool. It would uh, show the weights inside the threads. And I find out that uh, there was a, a rollback segment latch that, that the purge coordinator task was, uh, was uh, acquiring and releasing many times instead of just doing it once per process record. And I think that uh, this was this uh, could have been contributing to more purge lag compared to older releases because other user transactions could uh, grab this rollback segment latch for starting or committing a mini transaction, uh, uh, yeah, user transaction, and that would lock the purge coordinator from processing the records. Now the purge coordinator is a bit more arrogant or or uh, selfish, and it will hold this uh, latch a bit more. And, and then it will be able to proceed uh, with, with uh, processing the records. And uh, then there was another thing. Uh, I noticed that table lookups are taking quite a bit of time. Basically, almost for every unlock record, we would uh, look up the table ID in the InnoDB dictionary cache and get, get the table for that table ID. And this was costing a lot of CPU and lots of weights. So I, what I did, uh, it hasn't been finished yet. Uh, I need to fix some things regarding to uh, DDL. But uh, what I did was that the purge coordinator will look up each table ID just once and then keep the reference to the table for the whole purge batch. And, and the purge worker threads will process uh, a readily looked up table. And then uh, one thing we, we are doing, we were copying Unlock records for, from the Unlock pages in the buffer form. Just because we th uh, somebody thought that uh, you must not access records when the page is not, uh, when you are not holding a page slash. But I think that uh, by design of how the Unlock subsystem works, we don't actually have to lock the Unlock pages. It, uh, only we need to or the buffer fix on the pages. Because if we are doing a rollback, we are the thread that owns the transaction. Nobody else can write our unlock. We are owning the unlock pages. So we can we can just hold the buffer fix when doing rollback. And similar, to, similar in purge, the purge coordinator owns all the records that are going to be purged. It is the one who is going to free them. So we don't have to hold uh, any latch on the page and we don't need to copy anything, we just uh, keep a pointer to the pages. Pages cannot be removed from the buffer pool because we are holding a buffer fix and that should be enough. And uh, then there was uh, some funny thing, we had implemented some throttling uh, so that uh, the purge uh, wouldn't cause uh, 
drop of a throughput during normal workload, but actually this throttling itself could cause the perch lag. So maybe the, in this case the cure was worse than the disease. And uh, I think that any type of throttling, you should be very careful when thinking about introducing any throttling. Like previously we have this InnoDB thread concurrency or whatever these parameters used to be, limiting the number of threads that can be inside InnoDB. It's just a workaround. It's better to fix the actual bottleneck and then you get a simpler design and uh, maybe better performance. And this was actually something that I didn't find by off CPU time because uh, this is shutdown thing. Well, it was that the shutdown was using this throttling was ha happening in the wrong way and shutdown was thinking, oh, the system is overloaded. I must reduce the number of threads that I can use. And it, then at it, in the end, it was using just one thread for purging the history instead of the 32 threads that was uh, supposed to. So in 10.6, the slow shutdown is slower than it, it's supposed to be. And in the next uh, Next release, hopefully, if all these changes are implemented, it, it will be fast again. Then some future work uh, regarding the secondary index pages. I think that we should uh, introduce a per record transaction ID. And I believe that uh, for purge, then we wouldn't have to look up the primary key for each secondary index. We would just get the transaction ID from the record and, and then be done with that. But this is uh, something that requires a file format change, and that's why I have been reluctant to do it. Okay, thank you. That's the end of my talk.